Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so of course, we've already talked about this, I believe, but I don't think I made an official video stating the Lakers' uh, intent on changing their stance on giving up the second pick available to offer um, in an event that they can get Kyrie Irving. I think we already mentioned it, but not directly. So that is what it is. They're now open to doing it. Uh, so that's a good thing from in my mind. Um, and how I how it is to be viewed is this: the market overall has increased on everything. The price on everything has increased and because of it. The Lakers now have to raise their original offer off of that nature alone. It's not because they're willing to now raise their offer for Kyrie Irving in in terms of what it is they're willing to give up normally no they're adjusting to the market it's overall price it's like you know yeah am i willing to pay three dollars for gas i am willing to pay three dollars for gas but guess what the price is on the gas 350 now if i come up there with three dollars saying well last week it was 250 and you were trying to negotiate me up to 275 none of that matters now because it's 350 so that's kind of what it is it's like it doesn't matter what you were trying to negotiate two weeks ago the natural price tag on it is now increased so here's the problem because of that the nets are still driving a hard bargain so guess what i expect the nets to say it's going to cost more now yeah you want to see see you were going to take two picks when we had that we you weren't going for two picks when we had that price when we thought the market was as it was because that price was too much but now that that's fair price, of course you're willing to take it. But that's not what we're going for anymore because we still have the price tag as high as we did. Just because the market is going crazy doesn't mean we've lost our focus. So guess what? Since the market's raised the price for two picks, now we're going to raise it to two picks and a, something else, whatever they're going to say. So that's what you should expect if you're the Lakers because that's exactly what I would do to you if I'm Sean Marks. It's the only way to play it. Yeah, you're willing to pay today's fair price it's because inflation has made it so that today's fair price is now the same thing that you were trying so hard not to pay so that's all that is uh and also the lakers are also letting the nets know that if for some reason you guys are ready to make this move we're ready to make this move <laughs> like we're here we're, we're in we're in a position to uh give you what it is that you were initially asking for and if you're ready to make that happen we're ready to do it so that's great that's great i just know what the nets are going to do I know exactly what you're going to say. So, and I'm sure um, our front office expects it as well. The price tag went up on everything, so that means the price tag on one year of Kyrie Irving, unfortunately, has gone up for the Lakers, man. It just is what it is. I know it. I know that's what they're going to say. Because um, the thing about the Nets, what they're, what they're going to find out is the market's drying up for them in regards to getting rid of Kevin Durant. So if whatever they don't get from the Kevin Durant trade, they're going to try to make up somewhere else if they got their minds right so the Lakers better be prepared to pay a little more for Kyrie Irving's contract than we were initially going to about three weeks ago yeah and so same goes for getting rid of Russell Westbrook's contract that whole trade is going to cost more probably it's just going to cost more Austin Reeves something we don't want to give up we're going to have to give up I just know it but we still do it because we need to do it to make our team complete and to make us good enough um to, to basically compete for a championship. Now, unfortunately, if we give up the wrong role players in trying to make this deal happen, it'll still make us not good enough. Which is why I would say keep Austin Reeves at all costs. Make sure you pick the players that you know you can't give up and try to slide them away from the negotiation table entirely. And that's just all you can do. But that is what I'm looking at. So yeah, the Lakers situation is it is as it is, man. We've been at the table ready to make this move for weeks. Just let's just be honest. Um, I was certain the Lakers were ready to make the trade for Kyrie Irving when I saw LeBron James bring his sons to our organization's building and shoot around. That doesn't happen if the Lakers are still mulling over whether or not to do something he's asking them to do. It just doesn't happen. That's not a demonstration LeBron James is going to do. It's not. Um, so that was an indicator that him not signing the extension was something you shouldn't worry about because he's comfortable 
to the point where he's bringing his kids to the arena, to the building and shooting around and stuff like that. He's never done that before in these four years. At least not with the cameras around for us to see it. So, and, and given the fact that it's the off season too, and those kids are serious basketball players, he ain't just got a couple of his, you know, little boys coming around shooting around. No, these are guys who are going to be coming into the league uh, within the next six years. Um, do you see that this is not something that, 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 that he's taking lightly in that demonstration? So I'm not worried. I'm very, very, very happy with the Lakers right now. Uh, they're doing everything I'd want them to do. What I would want them to do at this point is to reiterate our desire to get this move done, which is what they're doing, um, and not making any other side deals that would otherwise jeopardize what we have to bring to the table, which we're not doing. So this is all good. Um, and we wait. We wait. We know what we have to deal with. Uh, it's a good chance we start the season as is. We know that. But we know that it's also zero chance we end the season as is. So we don't panic. Um, we just do what we have to do and work with the, what we have, which is right now um, the, the, the understanding that the Brooklyn situation is over. That's over. We know for uh, an entire fact that Kevin Durant has burned that bridge down and that will trickle down to Kyrie Irving moving on as well. And that's something we think is a foregone conclusion. Doesn't necessarily mean that a deal gets done, but as we said, it's gonna happen before the season ends. So that's all we can be certain of. I personally think it, start, it happens before the season starts. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Durant's traded today. Today. When I say today, I mean like today. And the reason why is because we know what the options are. Boston, Indy, um, and I say Indy because they have cap space to create a spot for him, even though that would not be desirable. San Antonio, Utah, these places are not going to do this. I'm just saying they can do this. Um, and then you look at teams like Toronto, who probably don't have the package right now without Scotty Barnes. And, um, you know, Philly doesn't have the package, in my opinion. Uh, so it's Boston. It's Boston. And it's the Pelicans. Um as Nick Wright brought up to us, basically the Pelicans have the they have the young talent, they have their picks, they have Brandon Ingram to make it match. The thing is, as I told you guys, I wouldn't do that if I were the Pelicans. I just I'd simply say no, and you don't have us either. You got Boston, that's it. Because I'm not giving up Brandon Ingram now. If we can get that deal done without giving up Brandon Ingram, then I'm still looking at other pieces on my board here, and I'm wondering who it is that they actually going to want if we're not going to match up with Brandon Ingram. I don't think you can get that deal done without inserting Brandon Ingram into it. And so the way I value B.I. doesn't allow me to do that personally. <laughs> uh, so that's just how I look at that. I would be very surprised if if David Griffin does that. I would be. I would be surprised if the Pelicans ultimately pull the trigger on a player who's insubordinate basically in, in terms of definition right now. Why? Because they went through that with AD and it didn't go well for them. And they have another player that they just signed um, – and Zion Williamson, who they need to have thinking about staying honest to his contract. I hate to put it that way, but that's exactly what it is. If, if I'm responsible for the New Orleans Pelicans, and I hate being this guy, but I can be this guy because I can think this way, which is why I can do this. But if I'm putting myself in the Pelicans owner's shoes... I don't think I can bring KD in because I don't want that rubbing off on Zion. I've already had somebody force their way out of my organization. I do not want KD rubbing off on Zion. You know what I mean? Having Zion thinking twice about staying here for any set of reasons. Now, I couldn't imagine Zion would want to leave if they have a team with Kevin Durant on it. But... <sighs> This is what I believe I understand, but it's not. it doesn't have to go this way. B.I. is in a situation where everybody on the team is on his timeline. There's no rush for him to do anything more or anything less, and everybody around him is good, and they're all talented. There's plenty of spacing. It's, everything is fine. They got picks galore. They got draft picks coming in, young players, all of which he can grow with. Some of them are have to leave because he can't pay everybody, but most of them, most of them, the best ones, they'll be able to pay. You bring in Kevin Durant and deplete yourself of most of those players and most of those picks. And you have a Zion Williamson and a Kevin Durant. Maybe you keep 
Trey Murphy, maybe you don't. Maybe you keep. I don't know who you're able to keep. You're obviously giving away Jones. You know, I'm not doing this deal without Jones. B.I.'s in that deal. A bunch of picks in that deal. Probably uh, Larry Nance or Graham's in that deal. And maybe throw in some more stuff as well if you're trying to do this properly in this market. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, now I got Kevin Durant here. Zion Williamson, who's not on his timeline. Whatever scraps I can keep after getting depleted for every of everything for a four-year deal on Kevin Durant. And now I got to try to make that work. History. David Griffin, Cleveland Cavaliers. He didn't do well in those situations. Not with the Cavs. Not when they were depleted of flexibility. They, he didn't work well in that situation. Griffin did not look his best without flexibility. He's worked very hard to get a great deal for AD and draft a bunch of guys they really, really like. I've, I've given you the spiel already. I just don't think it's a good idea for the Indy, for the for the, for the the New Orleans Pelicans to make a decision that depletes themselves of youth and picks that destroys your timeline and doesn't, in fact, make you much better on the basketball floor, if better at all. I just loathe that trade for the Pelicans. I don't think it makes them better at all. And most importantly, how much greater do you think Kevin Durant's going to be for the next four years than Brandon Ingram's going to be over the next four years, as we already said? How much greater do you think he's going to... How great is he going to be for every year of that? Is he going to play all four of those years? How many games are you projecting? Is he and Zion enough to carry you through a Western Conference? Are you sure what you have is not? These are things I can't answer for the Pelicans, but what I can say is I feel a lot better about the depth and the overall youth of an intact timeline and a bunch of people you have their bird rights than bringing in a disgruntled Kevin Durant who's obviously on the beginning of a four-year contract that he has not wanted to honor. It just does not make much sense for the Pelicans if they know what they're doing. Now, if you're just in love with the name, I say if you're in love with the name Kevin Durant and you love what he can do, scoring the ball, then by all means, do this. But I would encourage you to understand what depth means and that you would be giving it up to acquire him. And you already have his doppelganger in place, which does, in fact, already have an all-star appearance under his belt and is well underway in terms of being a star in this league. So now play with Brandon Ingram if you want to. We've already had the spiel yesterday. I just think it's important that we reiterate because these are the two spots that look obvious and the Pelicans look like the ones that may be more willing to do it because the Boston Celtics were in the finals last year and it's harder to break up the Boston Celtics in my opinion, than a young squad full of kids that have not been proven. It's just easy to do if you're the Pelicans than the Boston Celtics. I can't see myself giving up Marcus Smart. Mm -mm. Jalen Brown, I'll part ways with because the tea leaves show me that maybe he would be okay not being there, period. That's the only reason why I have no problem giving up him. I give up Robert Williams, even though I know everybody's on board. We're not doing that. I don't trust the knee. I don't trust it. I don't know how he's going to be going forward, if this is going to be a reoccurring thing or not. The risk is worth letting him go, in my mind. Um, you know, and, and like like I said, if there's other things on that, that Boston team, you know, Grant Williams, I'd rather not give up on as well. Keep those defensive players intact. You're going to need them for KD. But, you know, it is what it is, man. At the same time, Boston, uh, Brooklyn has a team to put together, and if I'm – Sean Marks looking at how things are going. Everybody's making fun of you for the stupid initial report of him wanting Tatum and Brown. Just silliness. Um, which should not have been reported. And see, that's the thing. It's like this. And I'll say this to be fair to Sean Marks and anybody else who has a situation like this. Whatever we have negotiating, if I say I want seven picks and you tell me no, okay, Fine, I don't want seven picks. Since you're not going to give me seven picks, I want the equivalent of seven picks. What would that be? Probably Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum if I'm trying to lowball the hell out of you. Right? If I'm trying if I'm trying to lowball the hell out of you, 
I'm going to say, all right, well, instead of this ridiculous thing I'm asking for, give me what I think is equivalent. And so in that situation, I'll throw that out there to have it so that you come down from that high space in negotiations to something that would be tolerable to me. I ask for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Maybe you throw in an incredible amount of picks and Jalen Brown because you for sure aren't going to give me Jason Tatum. I don't get that type of return if I'm only asking for five picks and Jalen Brown. You see what I'm saying? I'm not asking you something that I want you to answer that you that I want you to give me. I'm asking for something that I know you're not going to give me so that you can give me what it is that I would prefer, which is what I think Kevin Durant is doing, ironically, in asking for those guys to be fired. Anyway, point is... That's how you handle this in this scenario. So now I put that on the table and you take that and re and release it to the public so that I look crazy out here. And then I come back to you, you know, you come back to me and say, see, you, you're looking nuts out here. Now come down and you price that. It's like, bro, I didn't actually want you to give me Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I just wanted to get the five picks in Jalen Brown, but... You know what I mean? You're playing dirty. You want me to look crazy out here to basically get in my head. Think about it like this. Remember when Deshaun Stevenson was blowing in LeBron's ear? He wasn't doing it because he was trying to cool Bron off, and he wasn't doing it because he was trying to flirt with the man. He was doing it because he was trying to get in his head. That's exactly what a task, not a task, a move like this is. When you release something that's going to embarrass the hell out of the other side, that's all it is. Um, So... There's no way anybody's giving up both of those players, and there's no reason for us to know that he asked for that <laughs> at all. But we do know it. And because we know it, he looks crazy out here. Not to mention that some of the other stuff that he's done looks just as wacky, like actually getting wrapped up in a deal with Danny Ainge of any sort, let alone to get Royce O'Neal for a first-round pick, which we talk about ad nauseum every day because it's the worst thing I've seen outside of the Rudy Gobert trade, which ironically are both Danny Ainge. So it is what it is, man. I think at the end of the day, Sean Marks is looking not so strong, as I've said many times. And that's ultimately why uh, it's going to be tough to get the deal that they're looking for. And I hate to just lean it on him, but it's the truth, man. Precedents are set. And if you set bad precedents, it will determine how much leverage you have going forward with, with other negotiations, which is the value in such a move as letting the public know that somebody said something stupid. Put something on the table that would otherwise be considered stupid, to be exact. That's the value in that. You don't hold as much credibility now, you can get lowballed going forward. It's not about what's true, it's about what is perceived and what can be proved. And in certain situations, if it can't be proved, that's leverage. So he looks weak because it's understood that he's asking for crazy stuff and he's not getting anything. See, that's the thing. Danny Ainge asks for crazy stuff and he's getting it. So he doesn't look crazy. He looks like he's getting over on people. When you ask for crazy stuff and people look at you like you're crazy, you don't have a, it established that you're actually able to get some of this crazy stuff done. Then you just look crazy doing it, asking for stuff. You see what I'm saying? It's all about how you appear. So, Sean Marks appears weak and looks like he's, a, he's, he's, he's using his leverage in the wrong way in some ways or misusing what would be considered leverage and it's not actually leverage, asking for certain stuff that he cannot get, allowing people to see him certain ways, stuff like that. It's just making it, you know, he's, he's learning these lessons on the fly, it seems. And he's being hit with a lot. You know, and when you have to move such big pieces at once, it's hard to guard against a lot of different things that you really do need to guard against to keep your leverage. So I give him a pass, but it's what it is. That's why I think in saying that they're learning a lot of lessons in real time, you're clearly seeing that that is exactly what's happening. Some of these things just won't be duplicated because some of this stuff, you got a good example of what, how it goes with this example that we've never seen before. So, yeah, man, he has to he has to fall on the sword, um, be the guy that, that that teaches us the lesson the hard way. So, that's what I'm seeing there, man. It's gonna cost him for sure. I, I don't know how Joe Sai keeps him if he doesn't get a good return, and I don't know how he gets a good return. And that's gonna be the problem there, especially since. And this is something that I, that I had to point out because they said that oh, 
Kevin Durant doesn't understand he can't go to certain places. No, he knows that he can't. Everything about this situation in regards to Kevin Durant, all of the different places that he's asked to go, you do understand that mathematically it's very difficult for you, him to get to any of these places. Now, I know you understand that. I believe I understand that. I believe Kevin Durant understands that. That's what I'm explaining to you. I think he knows that it's not going to be easy to move him to Miami. I think he knows that. He's got Ben Simmons next to him. He knows the man's contract. He knows how the structure goes. He knows he can't get him there. He knows he couldn't get to Phoenix because chances are Kevin Durant's in the know and probably knew what was going on behind the scenes with Phoenix. Phoenix had a big secret going on and how they were playing Aiden's situation. But it's only a big secret because the public didn't need to know about it. Chances are stuff like that was probably being talked about behind the scenes. Chris Paul's on the team. I can't, I can't see a world where Kevin Durant didn't think that the Suns were going to resign DeAndre Ayton. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think he thought that he could actually get to the Suns. I don't think he thought he could actually get to Miami. I don't think he thinks he can actually get to Philly. And I don't think he thinks the reigning NBA defending Eastern Conference champions are going to break up their quarter to bring him in. I don't think he thinks he can get to any of these places. No, no. I think Boston's likely because they would be willing to make a move. But the move that they would have to make would be breaking up their core that just got them there. I don't... And 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 he's asking that he be a part of a team that has Marcus Smart on it. You can't make this deal without Marcus Smart. It's nearly impossible for the Boston Celtics to pull off trading for Kevin Durant without putting that player in the deal. So, like, he's, he's making sure that he's closing doors... He's making sure that he's tanking his draft stock or his trade stock with the moves that he's making. He is making it hard on Sean Marks in every way possible. You see that? It's almost like the equivalent of what they're saying Sean Marks is doing, which is asking for the world, knowing nothing's going to happen. This is what Kevin Durant's doing, asking for the world, knowing nothing's going to happen. You see the war that's taking place right there? Those two are not really serious about doing anything, it seems, but making other, each other uncomfortable. That's what it looks like. And that's what the tea leaves are showing me as I look at it that way. Um, something was also mentioned in the segment that I watched. Um, Nick Wright and, and, and those guys, first things first. Um, they were essentially saying that Kevin Durant, what was it? I lost my train of thought. I hate when that happens. But uh, yeah, there was something said in regards to Kevin Durant. I lost it. But, but uh, he's at the end of the day gonna have to figure out where he wants to go so i hate when it happens man i had a good point kevin durant at the end of the day hopefully he can find a place to go i know he can't probably land the place he wants to be but if anything it looks like he's trying to back himself into a situation where they just have to hold out and i don't see the strategy behind that but it looks like that's what he's doing it looks like that's what the other side is doing as well sean marks you're not serious about actually trading him if your price tag is too high to move you know you got to respect that he's his trade grab value is, dra is, is dropped to the ground because his moves, as we said, and now as the Lakers are going to have to adjust to the Kyrie Irving price, so are you, Brooklyn, going to have to adjust to the KD price. So that's what I'm looking at there, man. I just wish I remember what the heck they were saying. It was a good point, too. But uh, I'm sure I'll remember it when I listen back. To be unhappy with myself. This doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Uh, but, yeah, man, that's what it is, man. DDF 44. I am uh, going to be looking to see if a move is actually made. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if something was done today now that we have so much on the table that we understand. Um, and so little wiggle room to make moves. All it really takes is one team to say, you know what, I can do it. Because it looks like nobody can do anything. But there are certain contracts that can be moved to make this thing make sense, including da -da -da -da, Anthony Davis. That's the one team that ain't nobody going to mention, and I know Jimmy Buss is not interested in doing this. That's why I'm not even interested in mentioning it, but it is possible and probably the easiest trade to make. It is the easiest trade to make. Even now, while nobody's looking in that direction, it is still the easiest trade to make, and I still can make an argument both sides should make it. And I know they don't want to do it. Hell, I'm not even certain I want to do it watching how KD's behavior right now. I'm not sure I want to do that anymore. 
as a Laker fan, KD kind of lost me a little bit. I don't know where, I, somewhere in the last three days, I don't know where, he, where where his strategy is going. I'm still still trying to read the tea leaves. I don't know where we're at. I thought I was on the same page until we walked away from the Nets in such a way that really doesn't make him easy to move. I'm still trying to figure this out. Now, what I think could possibly be going on there is he's trying to make sure that the team that he lands on has the most possible on it. That's the only logical thing now is why the hell are you tanking your trade value and trying to move? Because you want to make damn sure that you're playing with Marcus Smart. You want to make damn sure that you're playing with whoever it is. That you, you know what I mean? Like, that's how you do it, by making it so that it's impossible to move you unless they accept so much less than what you're worth. So that might be the strategy. That might be what he's up to. But that does prolong the process, and it could risk him not getting traded at all. But if he applies the right amount of pressure, unfortunately, as I said, the way Sean Marks is looking, it looks like it might work. But just because Sean Marks appears weak, and I'm saying that, doesn't mean he is weak. And it's just up to him to make the good decisions from here on out. You're only as weak as your, la your next decision. That's the truth about this, this leverage thing. And you're only as strong as your next decision, too. None of us need to forget that. You know, as it pertains to leverage. As soon as you show any little bit of weakness, boom, you're right back to where you started and trying to develop and establish the leverage. It can take weeks to establish it. It can take moments to tear apart. So that's something that should be understood amongst everybody. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got to say, man. That is the thought. That Kevin Durant point never did come back. Brain. Man, it is what it is. I, I think he will ultimately find himself in a situation but it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of humble on both sides. Both sides are gonna have to humble themselves in order to get the return uh, that they can live with. You know, KD landing somewhere where he could be happy and play and win. The Nets being able to start over or do whatever it is that their plans are. But if I'm Joe side, I'm telling you, I'm looking at Sean Marks really, really carefully right now. Like the net, your next move must be your best move, Sean. This is not a situation where you can just do any old thing now. No. Any deal with the Philadelphia 76ers should be turned down. I'm sorry. It just, they can't get a good trade going. Even if it's the last trade on the table, it needs not be made. You hold out if Philly's the only thing you got. I'm sorry, KD. I'm sorry. I just, I can't value things properly and then lie on this camera. I can't look at things the way I actually see them and then pretend I don't see them a certain way. It's exactly how I see it. His contract value is, is plummeted and it's going to be hard to move properly. It's going to be hard to move properly. So he's just going to have to wait this out, hold out if that's what he's going to do to force his hand. It ain't no sense in going out there and faking an injury because if you do that, you become impossible. Uh, so I wouldn't suggest that, but I do think that's what could happen, as I've already told you guys. So. Hopefully, all is well, man. I've been dragging this out, hoping this thing would come back into my head. It never did. So I'm going to let y'all go and eat my food and mull over what it is that we've talked about here. And hopefully if that message comes back, I might um, give y'all a separate video telling y'all what my brain just refused to right now. So that's what I got. Video 44. Thank you all for watching.